So let's talk first about safety matters. What is safety involving delivering first aid and CPR? Well, it's talking about your safety because if you're not safe to deliver first aid and CPR, you're no good to anybody, right? So before you ever, ever, ever do any first aid or CPR on a patient, you need to make sure that the area is safe for you to do so. So what we mean by this is take a look around your surroundings. For instance, let's say there's been a tragic car accident on the highway and you see somebody laying out in the road that needs immediate medical attention. Well, it doesn't do you any good to go running out there to help them if you get hit by a car, right? Because now you're no good to them and you're no good to yourself. You've taken yourself out of the equation. So it's imperative that you look very carefully, making sure that there's an area that you can safely get to with the patient and that you can get them into an area that is safe to deliver the first aid and CPR that they need. But when we talk about safety, it's more than just your physical safety. It's also your mental and legal safety. Because what's one of the concerns that most people have when it comes to giving first aid and CPR, especially to a stranger? Am I going to get sued, right? I mean, let's be real. Everybody likes to sue today for various different things. So it's important that you understand that you are covered if you choose to deliver first aid and CPR to somebody in need. You see, virtually every state has some sort of a Good Samaritan law. And a lot of people have heard this term, Good Samaritan law, but they don't really know what it entails. And what basically most states say is that if you are a volunteer provider of first aid or CPR to somebody that is in need, then you are covered and cannot be sued for your actions unless your actions are grossly negligent. If your actions are grossly negligent, then you could be sued. But if you do everything reasonable to help the person, then you can't be sued. So what do we mean by grossly negligent? Well, let's take an example here. Let's say that uh, you go out, you see somebody, and they've got what appears to be a broken bone on their arm, and they're in need of help, and they consent to you giving them help. And you take the arm and you fold it in half and wrap it up because that ah, seems to be a good idea for a way to get them to the hospital. Well, obviously, that's not reasonable. That's gross negligence on your part. You did something that doesn't even make sense trying to help them. But if you went over there and you attempted to somehow splint it up and uh, it just didn't work right, you didn't get the splint on accurately, you can't be held liable for that as long as you made a good faith effort to do what was reasonable to assist them with their problem. It's important to remember that Good Samaritan laws only cover you if you're a volunteer provider. If you're a medical professional like a doctor or nurse or a first responder, you're held to a higher standard legally.